Bienvenidos a un programa más de la serie. Hoy en adelante, en ausencia del consejero y candidato de la ciudad por el Distrito 8, Robert Donovan, una conversación con Benjamín Juárez, el candidato opositor. A última hora y después de haber aceptado la invitación de adelante para sostener una entrevista con los dos candidatos a la posición de concejal de la ciudad por el Distrito 8, Robert Donovan nos comunicó a través de su oficina su cancelación a esta entrevista debido a razones personales. El año pasado, una coalición de latinos abogaron frente a la ciudad de Milwaukee para asegurarse de que al menos dos distritos de los que iban a ser creados reflejaran el crecimiento de la población latina. De acuerdo con la ciudad de Milwaukee, la población que ocupa el Distrito 8 está conformada por un 62% de latinos en edad de votar, mientras que la que ocupa el Distrito 12 se conforma de un 67.8% de latinos votantes. En adelante, nos preocupamos por presentar información a la comunidad latina que va a ser afectada por las próximas elecciones del 3 de abril. En una entrevista, el candidato Benjamín Juárez, en ausencia del candidato Robert Donovan, presenta a la audiencia el plan que utilizaría para solucionar los problemas planteados a través de cada pregunta si fuera elegido a concejal del Distrito 8 de la ciudad. Benjamin Juarez, uh, thanks for joining us on Adelante. Gracias. Uh, uh, Benjamin, the first question is, uh, you are a candidate for one of two districts uh, that have been created with a majority of Latinos of voting age. If elected in this aldermanic district, uh, how do you plan to advocate for equal and greater resources for all residents and for Latinos in particular? I'll be definitely a vocal advocate and also um, an advocate um, through policy. As a, as a person that has studied um, policy before, mm -hmm. I, had, I do have my master's degree in public policy mm -hmm. and uh, economic development. I want to work toward making the right type of city ordinances that will help out our neighborhoods, especially with um, trying to fix our streets. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we uh, have actually talked about uh, when, when we go out and speak to people out on the streets and at their doors. Um, they're very concerned about what's going on, who, who's paying attention. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that the city is paying attention to the 8th District. So I want to get in and make sure that we get the resources that we need to fix our streets, this, and some of those streets haven't been fixed in over 50 years. So we want to fix those mm -hmm. and get them going, get the, the stoplights that we need, the stop signs that we need, and everything like that. Because the more we do um, for anybody in the district, um, the more everybody will gain. Uh, well, the second question is, a majority of residents in this aldermanic district are Latinos who may not speak and understand English. Uh, for example, there are public schools in your area with as many as 60% of Latinos that speak absolutely no English, which means that they come from homes dominant in Spanish. How do you plan to communicate with this constituency? How do you plan to address the language and cultural realities of this population? Well, As somebody that grew up in this di the district and that speaks Spanish fluently, mm -hmm. I definitely will be um, somebody that would fight for everyone that, that does need that type of uh, that type of concentration um, on them. Mm -hmm. So yes, I mean, I, I always thought about it myself. Why aren't we being represented um, properly in the Common Council? Mm -hmm. Now, it's not to say that only Latinos should be represented on the Common Council. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to the 8th District. I want to represent everyone, mm -hmm. but in, as a person that understands the culture, as a person that speaks the language, mm -hmm. I would be very effective in knowing what the needs are and how to address them. And uh, how do you feel uh, on regards uh, the uh, uh, more than 60% in your district yeah. uh, that uh, are Latinos in voting age And uh, uh, many and of them will prefer to express their concerns in Spanish. Absolutely. And that's why, I you know, I would want to make sure that people that speak mainly Spanish are treated um, in a fair way, mm -hmm. you know, where, um, where we would have people on our, on our uh, or people that work for the city mm -hmm. so, um, to speak Spanish so that, you know, they can get the right services that they need. Um, there's a lot of uh, people that I've talked to in Spanish mm -hmm. and no, not in English. Um, they, they've told me that they've been hung up on mm -hmm. and uh, 
people have laughed in their faces when they've tried to go get these these uh, these services. Mm -hmm. And these are citizens. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, citizens and permanent residents. They are mm -hmm. here. They are contributing to to our local economies. Mm -hmm. They are paying their taxes. You know, we need to make sure that they're represented well. Well, uh, these um, uh, constituents that we are talking about, I will be very interested in knowing if you will be willing to hire bilingual and bicultural uh, uh, staff for your uh, administration. Absolutely. You will be. I, I definitely will, yeah. I will, I mean, to me, that's very important. Like I said, mm -hmm. people that, that call to get city services and the people in the city services if they, you know, if they don't understand them, they might even hang up on them because, I mean, they believe they can't help them. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, we should have a segment for, for them, for the people that, that speak only Spanish. Uh, and the same goes for people that, that speak other languages as well. We mm -hmm. can't, you know, we have, it's a very diverse district. And that's what I love about that district, actually. Um, there's, there's people that speak Spanish, there's people that speak Hmong, people that are, you know, uh, Laotian. Mm -hmm you know, a lot of different languages. And there's still a lot of um, older people that, that speak uh, Polish, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe they might like to hear something then too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, that's, um, it's very important to me, very important that we, we make sure that proper, there's proper representation mm -hmm. and also um, that people, you know, have the understanding that they can vote, that they can vote, that they can make a difference. Just because they speak a different language doesn't mean they're not a part of this country. Good. Um, for question uh, four, as a city alderman, would you be uh, voting on appointments to boards and commissions? And you will um, exert influence on other important appointments. How will you ensure that more Latinos are appointed to boards, committees? Uh, how will you ensure diversity and make it an integral part of your tenure in this position? Well, I know plenty of well-educated Latinos that have their master's degrees, that have their doctorates, I would encourage them mm -hmm. to come and look at this position, you know, any position that's being opened up, that, you know, we need their, um, their participation in this as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do, is actually encourage them to come in and mm -hmm. say, look, I have skills to offer this city, let me be a part of it too. And I would, I would say, yes, let's appoint them. Good. Um, Question number five. Uh, the area of the city is highly uh, concerned with the future of bilingual and bicultural education. Greater quality of education and more Latinos going to college. Uh, this seems to be a global of uh, every organization in the Latino community. Will you actively support uh, these goals and join Latino organizations in their effort to secure better education for their children youth and adults? Absolutely. I mean, when you increase education mm -hmm. among, you know, the citizens of your area, mm -hmm. you're basically creating um, just more, like an, an increase in the local economy as well. Mm -hmm. Because when somebody is well educated, they begin to think in a different way, in ways that other people might not think. And so they can bring in new ideas to make our city better when it comes to services, when it comes to products that they might even create themselves. And so, yes, I mean, the more education to me, mm -hmm. the better. And that's, I would definitely join the organizations to make sure that, you know, we're educating as many people as we can, as long, you know, cause, because we're gonna retain them here in the United States. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna go anywhere. So the more educated people we have, our economy is just gonna strengthen even more. Um, in uh, uh, question number six, uh, we uh, will uh, look at a very important area or concern among Latinos. Uh, comprehensive immigration reform is a major issue for Latinos. As alderman, will you actively support ordinances, school policies, state legislation, and federal legislation that promotes the best interest of Latinos affected by their immigration status? 
Now, immigration status, um, what exactly are you like uh, pointing at there with, with that question? Well, um, there, uh, there is a population in mm -hmm. both districts uh, yes. that uh, for sure uh, is undocumented. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they may be looking to legalize their situation, mm -hmm. but in the middle of their situation, they have to face uh, uh, difficult circumstances. Absolutely. And um, if uh, you have lived among Latinos, you know that this is a constant worry yep. for the rest of Latinos. Yes. And that's another thing too. Yes, a lot of people are working on their on their status mm -hmm. to, to become, as they say, um, documented, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, I mean, of course I would help them in that situation, mm -hmm. you know, because like I said, if we retain the, the people that we've put um, that we've uh, invested in, mm -hmm. then we're just going to benefit from it, plain and simple. I mean, I don't know anybody else that's trying to say, don't educate somebody or don't help somebody. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, hurting yourself in the long run. And so that's how we have to think. We have to think in the long run. We have to understand that once we help the people that need the help and we better them and we strengthen them, mm -hmm. We're going to we're going to, to reap uh, the benefits of that. Good. Um, there is uh, extensive research that shows that immigrants uh, transform the economic life of a community. Uh, the growth of small Latino businesses has been one of the most important contributions of Latinos in this district. Uh, how do you propose to actively support their expansion? and to help Latinos small business create more jobs in the district. Uh, what practices and policies will you advocate as an alderman to ensure that the city and other county and state institutions support a Latino small businesses? Well, in my practice as, as somebody in policy, mm -hmm. what I've noticed is when you target in a certain area, mm -hmm. you're, going to, you're going to automatically help the people that already live there. Mm -hmm. So if we target the 8th district, mm -hmm. let's say, and the majority population is Latino, the more, the, the more information you get out about helping them when it comes to giving them the right tools for their business, let's say, maybe educating them and things like that in, in the Microsoft uh, suite and, and all these other things mm -hmm. to try to make their businesses better. Um, the more you target that and the more information you get out in that population, you're going to have a majority Latino, um, how do you say, um, them participating. So what I, like to, what I would like to see is more targeting mm -hmm. of the areas in the 8th district. So then automatically, Latinos will participate. And you know, that's how I, I, would, I, would, work on, I would work on things like that, like uh, business improvement districts, tax, tax increment financing mm -hmm. for, for people that live there that want to start their businesses. Mm -hmm. I want to work with that. There's a, um, the website kickstarter.com, mm -hmm. you know, the, um, where we can um, show the, uh, the idea, the business idea mm -hmm. for someone um, that's in the district we put it on the website and people from all around the country look at that idea and if they like it they'll invest in it themselves mm -hmm. so that's how we have to work together we have to look at the the, the solutions that we have in the city mm -hmm. but we also have to look at the rest of the country good um, public safety and crime uh, must be a matter of concern uh, for anyone representing uh, this district uh, what will you do to ensure the safety of uh, constituents and to reduce crime in our neighborhoods? How will you work with the police department and other organizations concerned about this issue? Well, what I want to work on is actually um, utilizing our neighborhood schools. Mm -hmm. What's very important, especially in the summertime when crime is, you know, increases and things mm -hmm. like that, well, a lot of it has to do with kids not doing anything, you know? So what we want to work on is actually having the neighborhood schools becoming neighborhood hubs for mm -hmm. everyone. So after, you know, well, actually during the summertime, they have summer school and things like that. Mm -hmm. But we have to uh, transform uh, those neighborhood hubs into places where kids go. They, they get tutoring, they get mentoring, mm -hmm. they get um, recreational activities and things like that. Mm -hmm. Not just during the day, but also at night. Mm -hmm. Because at night is when a lot of kids are looking for something to do as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to my district, in the 8th district, you'll see a lot of kids walking around at night, a lot, I mean groups of kids. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of them actually go to the schools, the neighborhood schools, and just hang out there. Mm -hmm. And it's dark, hardly any lighting. Mm -hmm. Well, the best thing to do would be to try to work with MPS mm -hmm. and try to open up um, those schools and try to get funding for it, too, because mm -hmm. I know MPS, is, it's, it's very tough for them right now. Mm -hmm. So that's why we would have to work hard to try to get funding for them so that they can open up those schools mm -hmm. uh, during the night so that kids can have recreational activities at night, so they can have a place to meet at night. Mm -hmm. You know how in the old days some people used to say, uh, let's go meet by the fountain or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the town square or something like that, yes. um, you know, in, in the, the little countries like El Salvador. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, that neighborhood school will be, would be that for them. Mm -hmm. And so that would help the police know where the majority of kids are that day mm -hmm. or that night, at mm -hmm. what time, mm -hmm. what's happening at that time. So the police would know, you know, would have a better way of tracking um, movement of those children mm -hmm. and then seeing where they, they might need to be um, around the district. Well, now that you mentioned that uh, there is uh, a concern about the empty uh, lots that are all over around uh, the district, yes. uh, the need of uh, green areas uh, yes. where uh, these spaces, uh, even the spaces owned by the city mm -hmm. uh, that can be utilized for uh, people uh, to exercise Absolutely. or to get together just in a nice environment, mm -hmm. especially, um, as you mentioned, uh, during the summer mm -hmm. when the crime increases. Yes. Um, would you be willing uh, to find uh, ways uh, to uh, uh, do better in these spaces so people in the district can use them in, in, yeah. uh, in, in such a, 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 a better uh, a way? Definitely. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a, we have, well, I advocate for, for urban gardening. Mm -hmm. So a lot of kids, when they learn how to use their hands, it's, a, it's a, like a, an opening experience, an mm -hmm. eye-opening experience. I, I remember for myself, mm -hmm. I used to, uh, I'm a gearhead. I, I love working on cars. Mm -hmm. So I remember the first day I learned how to, you know, change the spark plugs and the spark plug wires in my car, mm -hmm. my own car. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I was, I looked at my hands and I said, I can do something with my hands. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't have that experience. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to do that. We need to help them have that eye-opening experience. And a lot of that comes from urban gardening. Mm -hmm. um, it, a lot of it, it can even come from raising, raising chickens, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah, so I mean, I'm an, I'm an advocate for that. Getting them, making, or having kids busy is one thing, but having them busy with a purpose is another, and that's what I want to do. I want to give them a purpose. Um, uh, Benjamin, uh, there is a constant uh, concern among Latinos about uh, police enforcement. Mm -hmm. There has been very sad experiences among Latinos uh, with the way that uh, police have approached uh, the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is your thinking uh, on that regards? Uh, how uh, will you advocate uh, in the police department, uh, what will be your uh, uh, ideas mm -hmm. on how to uh, keep uh, the neighborhoods uh, safe, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, police officers uh, being respectful yes. of their duties and uh, of the Latino residents? Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, absolutely. I would actually like to keep, um, keep a record of that for, in my own office as well for mm -hmm. people that, you know, I, I do understand that there have been people um, being disrespected by mm -hmm. the police officers. Mm -hmm. um, there have been, you know, records of, of these things happening and things like that. And we have, to, we have to help our police officers, but they have to understand as well that we should hold them accountable as well for, for you know, their, their treatment of, of the people of the district. So it's a both and, you know, we have to definitely find the right resources for our, our officers mm -hmm. because the more budget cuts there are, the harder it is for them to, to respond to, to calls. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult for them. It's, I mean, it's tough to be a police officer. Of course. Um, but at the same time, yes, I mean, we, we do have to be holding our officers responsible. And there are officers, you know, and there should be that type of relationship where we feel safe when they're around. Um, what uh, would you tell uh, uh, to our audience uh, on regards to uh, your story? Uh, your values, uh, the facts that are in your history that will convince them that you are the uh, right representative for them uh, to advocate in the city. Uh, that is the, the main administration 
that will be uh, directly affecting, you know, uh, their families. Well, I've, uh, I grew up in the district. Mm -hmm. I, I moved there when I was 12 at, um, in 1995. Mm -hmm. And I've been there ever since, and it was about 12, I'm sorry, it was, uh, it's been 16 years. It's mm -hmm. about to be 17 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, and it's been wonderful, and I'm very proud to, to have always been there. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, and uh, I'm sorry, I graduated from Pulaski High School mm -hmm. and went on to graduate from Marquette University. I do, I am a very well-educated person and I do have experience. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was at Marquette, I went over to, uh, to work for, for uh, the mayor's constituent relations office. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there to, to, uh, to work with the people of the, uh, of the 8th district. And uh, when, when people would call, they would call to ask me to fix, their, fix potholes on their streets, you know. Or, or clean up their streets or get their streets plowed and things like that. Mm -hmm. Garbage pickup, all these things. Mm -hmm. I'm very experienced in that. I, I did that for a while. And, uh, and, you know, they have nothing to fear when it comes to that. That's not going to change. What is going to change is the fact that we're going to concentrate on bringing more jobs to the district. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to stop anything that will help the people of the 8th District. And if I feel that something is not helping the district, then I'm going to, to look into it first before I open up my mouth and say that something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look into it because that's my profession as a pub, um, public policy professional. Mm -hmm. So they'd be getting a, a well-organized a well and well-rounded individual. And uh, what would you like to say to those Latinos uh, who prefer speak Spanish, who prefer their cultural way of uh, helping back, not just demanding, mm -hmm. but helping back. Absolutely. And those uh, hard workers, mm -hmm. uh, families, who uh, want to be part of uh, rebuilding their neighbors, neighbor, neighborhoods, uh, rebuilding their districts. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, will be your words for them um, if you want to have their words? Que voy a llegar a su casa, mm -hmm. voy a tocar la puerta y les voy a decir que salgan conmigo para trabajar. <laughs> Benjamin Juarez, uh, thank you very much for being with us on Adelante, and we wish you the best on the next elections of April the 3rd. Thank you very much. Thank you. A los candidatos les agradecemos el haber aceptado nuestra invitación y a ustedes, nuestra audiencia, les damos las gracias por sintonizar adelante y les recordamos que es importante que participen en las próximas elecciones que se llevarán a cabo el próximo 3 de abril. Y al final de un programa más de adelante, por favor déjenos saber sus comentarios en nuestro teléfono 297-7544 o escríbanos a nuestra dirección de correo electrónico en adelante arroba, matc .edu. Y visítenos en nuestro sitio del internet en mptv.org y en Facebook. Sintonícenos en Milwaukee Public Television, canales 10.1 y 36.2 todos los martes a las 6.30 de la tarde. Y en canal 36.1 los miércoles a las 12.30 de la medianoche y los domingos a las 5.30 de la tarde. En Wisconsin Public Television, WPT. 38.2 los martes a las 6 de la tarde y los jueves a la 1 de la mañana. Y en MPTV PM 10.3 los viernes a las 6.30 de la tarde y los domingos a las 6.30 de la mañana. Soy Patricia Gómez. Gracias por acompañarnos.